was thinking about cars recently. I don't know why. But I was thinking about the fuel that's in cars and how, you know, we seldom have enough of it. It takes us, you know, we uh, live in an era where gas is really expensive and most of us probably only think about how we're going to get some to get us through the week. How much gas, you know, how long, how long is the full tank going to last you this week, right? Um, from back in the day when I was in high school, you know, you were always giving people rides, hoping they would chip in on gas money, right? They never did, you know, they still ask for rides. But uh, I was thinking recently about fuel with people. I was like, what if, you know, if you compare people to cars, we have a fuel that drives us. Now, we have physical fuel, obviously. You know, we, we get up and we eat breakfast and whatnot. Um, hopefully, we eat meals. Or... But I'm not talking about physical fuel. What about the thing that motivates? You know, we deal in motivation, whether we want to or not. Everybody has a reason for why they wake up in the morning, you know, and, and some of us have, uh, different, we all have different reasons for what motivates us. But what I thought about, and I thought in relation to myself, I wonder if you're similar to, to, to me. I thought, you know, so much of my life is conditional motivation. If today goes well, if we win this game today, if work, if, if I'm successful at work and I feel like my kids have learned in my classroom, then, if then, it's all conditional statements. And then something happened. I had a conversation recently that changed everything about how I look at fuel. I thought to myself, man, instead of being all, of, all obsessed with the quantity of the fuel and the positive accolades, and uh, the materials and more money and this and that. I was like, what if I was part of a process that was fuel? So that my fuel wasn't the end result, but my fuel was actually how excited I am about the process, moving toward the thing I want most in life. I thought about what that was. And I thought about one aspect of it because it's so broad when you think about it. And I thought about what makes me come alive. And this one aspect, in this, in this case, it had to do with college athletics. And the thought that if you transform college athletes, that if you can be a resource to them um, and develop character in a meaningful way, not touchy-feely stuff, you know, but if you could help them discover their motives, purify their motives for why they, why they do a lot of the things they do. For me, that was something that was like exciting. And I thought, just because I don't work at a university doesn't mean that that can't be my fuel. If that's what makes me come alive, why can't I do that every day? Why can't I do something attached to that motive and that objective every day? The idea that I have, thinking that, you know, I have something I can offer these athletes, something I can offer sports programs so that I can prevent um, those situations or be a part of the solution to the problems of uh, that, that plague many universities. When you see players uh, being discovered later that have had dealings with agents prior to their going professional, or you'll see two teams, recently we had two teams over in the state of Ohio that um, had a bench clearing brawl during a game and you wonder where that stuff comes from. Well, you know, I thought to myself, I know that I can impact that world. I know that I have something that um, I'm excited about doing and that can be my fuel, even though I teach, teach eighth grade English every day. And I thought it wasn't about taking that and not letting it, you know, kind of bleed into my work. It was, it was simple things like this. It's like, at lunchtime, can I make calls to universities while I'm eating my lunch or before I eat my lunch or I skip lunch today? Ooh, how, you know, I can always eat lunch later. You know, I thought, are there specific times during my day where I can do something related to what I really, really want to do? You know, and it doesn't make me less of a worker. It doesn't make me less of a person or less committed to the job I have or if you're a student, less committed to the thing you do at school. But if you're really driven by something that is beyond what you do every day, um, maybe that's good for you because just being involved with that thing, just being involved with moving in that direction excites me. That fuel never runs dry. And not only that, the quality of it is such that I can't be disappointed by a result because there are no guarantees that a university will allow me to come in and mentor their athletes or to, to do six man curriculum, you know, you know, um, but what I can guarantee is that I'm involved with something that brings life to me. And that would be my question to you. Are you involved with things that really bring life to you? Or are you just doing the drill? And are you only concerned with safety and financial security? There is so much backwards about this world. And there's so much that is sold to us and told to us about what we should value. But until a person looks in the mirror and really is honest about what they do value and whether or not they are involved with their values on a daily basis, I think you stand to be fed a bill of goods. And I kind of realize that. And so I'm excited about good fuel, and I'm not excited about bad fuel. And I've decided that every day should be a good day. 
I don't want to be fueled by whether or not these possibilities actually come to fruition that aren't, you know, really good, good indicators of whether or not I'm being successful. I can't control students and I can't control players and I can't even control that when I make a right turn after I leave this office, something good is going to happen. But I can guarantee that I can stay involved and, you know, I, I was so excited about um, this new fuel that I made a goal sheet. I, we did a project in my class um, um, with my eighth graders, show it to you. And it was it was kind of a diorama, it's something like this. And on the other side of it, there's flaps and there's stuff written on the inside of it and it's probably hard for you to see because it's on white paper. But on one side, I had you know long-term goals here, I listed eight of them. Um, and we had the students do the same. Um, and I had short-term goals here. And in the middle, I have an action plan for both my short-term goals and my long-term goals. And here I had the general goal, you know, on this top flap. And it's just something I keep, in, it's, I keep with me. I take it with me everywhere I go. I remind myself every day that this is what, this is my fuel. This stuff is what makes me tick. I can't help that it makes me excited. I, you know, some people say, whoa. Some, some might say, well, are you doing this when you should be working? No, I do a good job in my job. You know, I work hard. But that doesn't mean I have to neglect the things that really make me come alive. The thing most important to you is good fuel. As long as it's ethical and it's building and not destroying, that's a testament of who you really are. And if you're selling out to money, you're the one that's losing. Nobody else is. Well, other people are losing, actually, because your best contributions to this world aren't being realized. But if safety and physical safety and, uh, you know, we're in preservation mode and, and we're not giving of our, you know, to, to ourselves, given life, because we're really operating from a real uh, kind of locus of, of this is the odds kind of put in me, you know, this is what makes me come alive, then, hey, you, uh, you're missing out. You're missing out. It can't be all about even your children. Your children aren't God. Don't worship your kids. Don't worship your job. Don't worship things that suck at being God. You know what I'm saying? Um, find out what makes you come alive. And I'm telling you, that thing is going to be the thing that's allowing you to serve humanity. That thing right there will be what gets you out of the, ex the excuse making that we do. When we say we can't be because look at where I am all day. I work here. I work. And I spend, you know, my, the best hours of my day here. Hey, you can take an hour. You can take 30 minutes. You can, you can, you can give yourself life. Don't just think about what you love to do. Find a way to get in it. Do it. All right? Your life will change. You'll be better for it. All right, then, sixman.com if you want to check out some of the stuff I talk about. God bless you guys. Be strong always. All right, you're not alone.